Hello, I'm Donnie with Perrycraft Incorporated, and we are uh, probably one company you haven't heard of, but we've been around for 41 years. Since 1982, we've been manufacturing United States made aluminum roof racks, luggage racks, uh, truck bed rails, and other uh, auto accessories. Um, my name is Donnie. I am the president of Perrycraft and have been for several years now, and just want to introduce you to, if you're not familiar with, and uh, kind of go into a little bit of explanation of installation for one of our racks. So this one right here, this is what is called our Aventura series. And so we make a factory style roof rack. Our systems are universal uh, that they're size specific and not vehicle specific. So one of the things our part numbers make sense. So this is the Aventura line, um, a product that would be 42 inches wide by 68 inches long. The part number is AV. 4268, meaning 42 inch wide, 68 inches long, and dash B for black, if you want the black bars, or dash SV for our silver bars. And feet and crossbar connectors will always be black. But the Aventura line uh, fits uh, a lot of vehicles. Uh, any of the sizes that you look at, you can decide what's, what fits specifically to your vehicle. We do have an application guide that's online that will show you what uh, parts we recommend. What we recommend is putting the rack on the flattest part of the roof. Normally what that ends up meaning is a couple of inches up, about two inches up from the back hatch joint where that raises up, just so there's no interference when the hatch raises up. And then where this front end finishes would normally be what's called the B pillar or where your front door closes or where the seat belt is hooked to, that's a pillar that goes across the vehicle and that's the B pillar, B as in boy. So normally the flattest part of a roof of an SUV, a truck, a van, uh, some type of crossovers, those type of things, the roof will be basically flat, may have a little bit of curve to it. And then once it gets to the B pillar, it normally tapers down again toward the windshield. And so it's a compound curve. We put basically a universal slight curvature to the, to the rails so they fit most of the vehicles. So since they're size specific, not vehicle specific, potentially your, your rack would show up and we may either have too much curve to sit exactly flush on the roof, or it may not have enough curve to sit exactly flush on the roof. And what you can do in, in the field, as we call it, is um, either put a little more bend or a little less bend to the rail just by putting in, put the rails between a couple of blocks, pressing down, either flattening it out a little bit or, or adding a little more curvature to it. So when you flip it over, it has the more curvature to contour exactly to your roof. This is our Aventura line. It's a uh, factory similar to um, a lot of different vehicles. Um, a lot of things are made these days into the factory fitment points that um, have similar look, but not quite. So if we think it's pretty close to the look, then we, we, we highlight that if it's if none of our systems exactly match, but it can fit as an application on the vehicle, then um, then we make that make that point as well. This is, like I say, our Aventura. We also have this is our Dynasport line, and it is very similar to. Um, like the Chevrolet or the Dodge Grand Caravan um, and, and similar ones like that. And this one comes in a um, black as well, both the powder coat are black. And then we also have a bright anodized on this system that has a, a, an anodized aluminum, real nice sheen to it. Uh, the, again, the feet and crossbar connectors will always be black. Um, you can order one of our systems with whatever size basically you want. You can go out and measure your car basically from the, most vehicles have um, that black strip or black gutter running front to back. That's called the weld joint and measuring across the vehicle that way at the B pillar, as well as a couple of inches up from the, the back hatch joint. There's a caveat for Hondas um, that we'll talk about in a minute, but um, basically the shortest of those two distances. So say if the front is 44 inches wide, but the back is 42 inches wide, then you would only go as wide as that in your part number. So a 42, and then measuring from that two inch point 
up to about the B pillar. If you land somewhere between 65, 68, something like that, the Dynasport lengths are 65 inches. The Aventura lengths are 68 inches. Our Sport Quest is, lands on the zero, so 40, 50, 60, 70, um, that type of thing. So the Dynasport ends on fives, 35, 45, 55, 65 length. Aventura lands on eights. 38, 48, 58, 68, 78, um, and uh, the Sport Trek as well also lands on uh, the zeros, basically, but its part number actually ends in a nine. So, a little bit confusing, trying not to be, but anyway, um, basically what you can decide to do is measure your vehicle, make sure there's enough room, Make sure there's enough room. This is the Aventura foot. Make sure there's enough room for that two inches width right there to be able to sit flat and flush onto a roof panel. So sometimes vehicles running front to back, they'll have ribs close to the edge, uh, but basically we need a good flat surface for this to sit. And then that rectangle portion of the roof. So, um, and the same thing with the Dynasport, this is the width of that. Now the Sport Trek has a very short rail. This is the rail for the Sport Trek and Sport Quest. And so it's literally what's called a flush mount rail. So it'll sit flush on the roof the entire length and screws and that screws down. And then the towers and crossbars of the Sport Quest um, rises up out of it that, that's on the rail there. So this is our Sport Quest line. Um, I consider it our most versatile because it is uh, a smaller track uh, width and that kind of thing. So it has more opportunities to sit on many different vehicles, uh, whether there's ribs or not, what kind of spacing you might have. These are not tied to the width of um, the crossbar system. So our crossbars uh, for these come in uh, 55 inches long, 62 inches long, and 70 inches long. This setup shows you that you can let the, let the crossbar run long, uh, what's called our pass-through through the tower, or we actually have a, um, a plug and hardware that we send with each kit. So if you want to cut the crossbar down to fit inside of here and give a nice smooth over smooth over for your crossbars. You can do that with the Sport Quest as well. <clears throat> Since they run long, the spacing between your rails is kind of up to you. You don't want to get them real skinny and be in the middle of the roof or anything like that, but um, they have a little more uh, variability of being able to kind of put the rails kind of exactly where you want them. Um, and then as long as they're running parallel, and then when the towers and crossbars fit in after that, then that allows for, like I say, either let them run long. If you want them 48 inches, you're welcome to have them at 48, or cut them down inside, or let them run long at the full 55, 62, or 70 inch length. Um, so installation of our system is, can be, has been known, not saying that it's not, has been known to be a little bit scary, because what you're actually doing is drilling holes into the top of your roof. We are, um, we, don't, we do not fit into factory fitment points, so this will fit on the sheet metal of the roof or the fiberglass top or Jeep top, that type of thing, but it is a drill in installation. And so like on the Aventura that you can see, there are three holes that, um, that get drilled in for each foot. So if it's one of our shorter racks that doesn't have a center uh, post, then it will, then you'll end up having three, six, nine, 12 holes in your roof. However, Our screws have a sealant coating on them that when you screw them into the roof, that this seals, this is a thread cutting screw or a thread, um, yeah, thread cutting screw, and it seals the hole when you put install these. So the two main caveats for installation of a Perrycraft rack are that the rails are running parallel so that you can allow, that allows the crossbars to move closer together further apart if you're using one of our full rack systems. 
and that you use a hand screwdriver after you've pre-drilled the holes. Use a hand screwdriver when screwing the, the towers down and the feet down because snug is enough. It may not seem like it, but it is. Um, when we've installed different systems, knowing that other companies have installed systems, you know, again, over the past 40 years, that um, once these are installed, you can shake the vehicle and these things are sitting extremely strong to the vehicle. Now, the caveat to that is that a roof rack is designed for weight to be on top of it. So the Sport Trek, the Sport Trek system has a 75 pound load rating. The Sport Quest here has a 180 pound load rating. The Aventura has a 110 pound load rating and the Dynasport has a 75 pound load rating. That is based on the strength of the crossbar. So any, any weight capacity would be based on the weakest link of anything. So crossbars are normally a lot, a uh, lot less strong than the rails that they're sitting on. So, um, in particular, With the Aventura, the Aventura's crossbar connectors allows the crossbars to sit on the rail as well. And then this has a 110 pound load rating. Now, if you ended up, our systems are designed, the Dynasport and uh, Aventura, especially, well, only, Dynasport and Aventura are designed in a size that aftermarket crossbars could be put on. So this shows you our full rack system, but, we also have these, just the rails in length. So <clears throat> like I say, in uh, our part numbers make sense. A rail system for us would be with an XX after the part number. So AVXX48-B would be a black, would be an Aventura, no, no crossbars, 48 inch rail system in black. Um, and so then you could put our, our line of Mont Blanc that we carry, um, Thule, Yakima, Malone, Rhino Rack, any of the other aftermarket type uh, crossbar systems that would attach to uh, normal factory sized crossbars would be able to fit on here as well. So that weight rating would then depend on what crossbar system you've got. So if uh, Thule has 165 pound load rating, then your crossbar, your full crossbar system would be 165 pound uh, load rating. Our Mont Blanc actually has a 220 pound load rating. So that would end up making the crossbar system have uh, a full 220 pound load rating. I know I'm bouncing all over the place with some of this, but there's complexity in the simplicity. So two sets of rails screwed down on each end in a middle, middle post if your system actually has one, then you can do pretty much you want whatever you want to with them. Put on a crossbar system, um, put on a basket, put on canoes, kayaks, ladders, lumber, whatever you might end up wanting to do. Um, like I say, with the versatility of our Sport Quest and our Sport Quest pad mount um, in particular, so this one is the example of our Sport Quest pad mount. And so, what it does is that pad foot gets mounted to the vehicle. So, you end up having a four pad feet. So, one here, one would go here, one would go here, one would go here two toward the back of the, ve back of the vehicle, two toward the front of the vehicle. And um, basically you can put them anywhere you want to, um, as long as there's room for the foot to fit. And what that allows you to do, if you've got a small vehicle like a Toyota Yaris um, that doesn't have very much roof line, but because the, a little bit of the limitation of the size of the feet of say a Dynasport and how much room that takes up, and doesn't allow a tremendous amount of, of crossbar to be grabbed onto, the pad of the Sport Quest pad system could be mounted really close to the front. I mean, not in that compound curvature, but could be mounted pretty close to the front of the vehicle and very close to the back of the vehicle and get a full length of, of carrying capacity on even a small vehicle. Sport Quest pad mount can basically fit on anything, whether that's utility trailers, it can even mount to the rails of utility trailers. Um, when you wanna put sheet goods underneath and maybe something, some two by fours on top. Um, could go on top of camper shells really easily, particularly some of these camper shells that might have a little bit of curvatures and different things that in the way um, that allow you to 
okay, here's a flat surface on this side, a flat surface on this side, and same thing up front. Now, now I can put these rails in. Now, the only bad thing, which I don't consider a bad thing because you kind of need to know what you're carrying anyway, but the only, I guess, disadvantage is that there's no rail system with this, so the crossbar cannot move from that position. We manufacture everything that we, uh, that we have here in the United States. If you ended up having a special request and said, well, sometimes I need to carry my kid's bike and it's gonna need to be, you know, three feet apart, two feet apart, um, but I wanna carry my kayak as well. And I'd like to have as much distance as I possibly can. Then um, you could actually buy another, you know, an additional set of feet um, of two feet or four feet or whatever so that you could have a middle point of end, you know, two ends and a middle point or something like that, if there was a variance in, in the way you carried something. So um, the installation of these, again, this, you know, this is basically pretend it's a sheet metal roof on a vehicle, then um, you would lay the rails and crossbars out and then mark where those hole locations are, take the system off, pre-drill all those holes, and then put the system back on, clean it up really good, then put the system back on, and then again, use a hand screwdriver to screw those screws in. And our recommendation is that you basically get a little bit snug throughout the rack, then go all the way back through, getting a good, nice snugness to them. But you certainly don't want to over torque and spin out and, and potentially rip through uh, the sheet metal of the roof because once you break that seal that way, or if you have to back the screws out, then we would recommend, you know, because now you've got to do something with that hole that got too big, we would recommend that you then um, put new screws back in. Um, this is similar to what would be considered a bolt-through kit. And so basically saying that this is a camper shell or a Jeep top or something like that, these are not fully out finished, but it would be where you have access underneath like you would with a camper shell, then now I can drill through and bolt this together so it's actually now bolted, on, bolted onto the roof versus uh, screwed in. If you're very willing to um, go all in, you could actually drop the headliner in a vehicle like a Dodge Grand Caravan or a Toyota 4Runner or that Yaris or a Chevy Aveo or whatever it might end up being. If you drop the headliner, then you could always use the bolt through kit just as long as you have access to it. So our bolt through kits will normally go on vehicles like um, cargo vans that have access to the skin of the roof underneath, um, camper shells, Jeep tops, uh, those type things, um, box trucks, whatever it might end up being to where you have access underneath so you can get you know a, a, a wrench on the on the nut on the bottom and somebody on top with the screwdriver uh, helping with that installation so um, that is a basic introduction to perry craft we have uh, like i said we've been in business since 1982 uh, my wife and i have owned the company since 2014 and um and manufacturing our uh everything out of the united states our aluminum comes out of uh, a couple of different places, one in Ohio, one in South Carolina. Our plastics come out of our injection mold um, uh, partner out of Florida. Um, and uh, even our boxes uh, are made uh, right here in North Carolina, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And so we're very proud to be um, an American-made uh, company. Um, I'm a veteran of the United States Navy and, and very proud of that as well. And so um, just wanted to make this video as basically an introduction. If you've never known who we are, uh, give you a little more in depth of that, a little bit more that I could go into, but I'll stop it at this point and, and say, provide some feedback. If there's questions that you, uh, have, then I would certainly be willing to answer those. So, um, whatever you think you need to see, please let me know. Um, you can visit, visit us at www.perrycraft.com. And certainly if you have any questions, just let us know. Thanks a lot.